Hey guys, Jexy here. Welcome back to another video. So I know it's been quite a bit of time since I uploaded last. Um, I've been working a lot, but now that the holiday season is over and works a little slower, I thought I could get back into uploading. Um, so if you enjoyed this video or you want me to see more content, please hit the like button, subscribe, let me know. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to do something a little different. I want to talk about addiction TikTok. Um, more specifically, people who do that whole point of view, I'm in withdrawal TikTok. So let's get into it. Okay, so first off, I have to say like a couple things ahead of time. I am not talking negatively about any particular content creator. I haven't decided whether I'm going to show clips of some of these TikToks. I do have some of them downloaded. I'm not sure whether I want to call anybody out particularly, um, especially because apparently people I know, uh, people who I know who are in recovery, who I respect, have also done these types of videos, which makes the whole thing very strange to me. So I'm not entirely sure whether I'm going to show any of them or not, but I guess we'll see. The other thing is, is that I think people talking about their recovery on TikTok is phenomenal. I think it's great when people show like what addiction used to make them look like versus what they look like now. Or, you know, I think showing the hope in, in TikToks, I think is good. I have no problem with people who are like, this is where I was in my addiction and this is where recovery, you know, has brought me. I look at every particular TikTok video as its own separate entity, right? I don't know your channel. I don't know, you know, you as a person. So I don't know whether you're in recovery, whether you're an active user, whether you know nothing about addiction or just pretending. So I take each video for what it is. And as I said, I don't really have a problem with people who record videos who talk about like what addiction was for them and where they are now in recovery. I think anytime we can show the hope of, of recovery, I think that's a good thing. So I don't have a problem with that. The videos I'm talking about in particular are videos where people pretend to be high or pretend to be in withdrawal when they're clearly not. Um, yeah, maybe they're acting or maybe they're reminiscing about what it was like when they were in addiction. But these videos don't have a now I'm in recovery and things are good and this is what life used to be and now it's not. They're just videos of them pretending to be high or pretending to be in withdrawal and then that's it. And I think the problem with that is one, it glamorizes drug use a whole lot. I have seen a lot of these videos where, you know, it shows somebody rocking on the floor saying like withdrawals suck. Like, yeah, okay, sure, they do. But that's not withdrawal. Like, sure, it may end you rocking on the floor, but there's a real difference between somebody who looks healthy, normal, in recovery, pretending to be in withdrawal, and somebody who is actively in withdrawal. Um, one creator I know on YouTube that a lot of people know, Derek Lambert, I don't know whether he posts much anymore. Um, I don't I, I don't really follow him much as uh, that I used to, but one of the reasons that a lot of people got into following his channel was because he recorded himself going through the stages of withdrawal. So he recorded himself on day one, on day two, on day three, on day four, and he recorded what was actually happening. Now, videos like that, I think, can be helpful because people who are going through withdrawal can relate to that. They can say, wow, yeah, look, and now you see him in recovery years later, and you know it's possible to get through that withdrawal pain. Because withdrawal is not easy. It is the, it's the fear that keeps most addicts continuously using. I know for myself, one of the reasons it took me so long to get clean was because withdrawal was so scary. Um, and I just have this problem seeing people pretending to be in withdrawal. Like, I'm sorry, but you are not that good of an actor. Like, you, you're just not. I've seen professional actors have a hard enough time trying to portray what it's like to be in active withdrawal. So your TikTok acting skills are not good enough to really portray what that's like. And what it does is it makes it seem like a joke. It makes it seem like, oh, this is what's so bad. Oh, you're afraid because you're sweaty a little or 
that bothers me. I've also seen a lot of these videos with people who are pretending, you know, saying like, oh, the horrors of drug use. And they're acting out these situations in their car. They're sitting in the driver's seat of their car, nodding out. Whether I assume they're pretending, right? Because who's videoing themselves nodding out for real, right? That's not, there's no way if you're in a situation where you're actually going to be nodding out that you're able to set up your camera and, and, and get that all working. Like we know that's not real. So the fact is, is to set up a situation where you're pretending to nod out while you're in the driver's seat of your car is ridiculously irresponsible. First of all, you got to imagine there's people around you. They don't know you're pretending. And here they see somebody stopped at a red light pretending to nod out in the, in the driver's seat of their car. That's scary. I think we need to be really careful because drug addiction isn't a joke. And especially this past years with the pandemic and isolation, we've lost a lot of people in recovery. We've lost people who had significant amount of clean time, who went back out and used and died. That's the reality of addiction. And these TikToks that are glamorizing that, I mean, look, there's a difference between glamorizing and sharing the reality. I luckily, while in search of some of these videos that I'm talking about, most of the videos I saw were what I would think are more appropriate. You know, the, the, the feeling that, you know, you get in recovery when you, when you lose a loved one or, you know, realizing that you know, your friend's not getting it and you're in recovery and they're not having to cut off relationships, right? There's there's real lessons in some of these TikToks. There's a lot of really, really good recovery content. So I want to be very clear that I'm not talking about all addiction recovery content on TikTok. In fact, I'm not even talking about most of it. But there's something to me about pretending to be on drugs. Um, The other videos that I saved that, and another reason I, I'm not sure I'm even going to share them are kids. Kids. Now, I don't, I'm, I'm 38, so my definition of a kid may be a little bit different than somebody who's younger than me, um, but like 18, 19, 20, like I still see that as a kid. Um, but, you know, there's kids who like put on like fake makeup and put some filters on and do these POVs, you know, you find out I'm a drug addict. Like, it's not a glamorous thing. It destroys families. And like, yeah, some of them are funny. You know, like there's this one girl who does like, she did a few of like your mom walking in when you're drunk and like, you know, and she falls on the bed. And I mean, yeah, they're funny. Sure. You know, or me coming in the house to Thanksgiving dinner drunk and she has a drink in her hand and she falls into the front door. Like, sure, some of those are funny and they can be funny and relatable to those of us who've had situations like that, right? For somebody who is been that person like sure we can go back and laugh at ourselves but when that's just the video the problem is is that it makes it look like it's funny to be the drunk person in your family when reality is that those family members are looking at you in horror right that you're just you don't know when you are that under the influence the damage that you're doing to your loved ones You don't recognize the harm that you're causing or the fear that they have of whether you're going to be okay or not, whether you're going to make it home. And so, yeah, making a joke of it is one thing, but I think it's always really important to to recognize that it's only funny for that person because they're not living that life anymore and that it's okay to look back and laugh at ourselves. But unfortunately, with TikTok's, you know, time frame on how videos are fairly short, you're not getting that whole message. And I think it can be incredibly dangerous to make addiction and alcoholism look funny. I don't know. I Maybe it's just me. Maybe I've just seen a few of them that hit me the wrong way. But I have seen people, and, and honestly, the ones that bothered me the most were from people that I know. Um, And so that's why I won't show them because I'm not going to call out people I'm friendly with. But it is something I do not understand. I do not understand the pretending to call your drug dealer what it feels like when your drug dealer says that they don't have any more and how stressed out that makes you like first of all yeah we've all been there second of all nobody's a good enough actor on tiktok to make that believable you're not really getting forth the desperation and the fear and the anxiety and and all of that that happens when you run out 
that's not a ha-ha TikTok type of feeling. That's a what am I going to do? I can't possibly get through my day if I'm going through withdrawal. How am I going to take care of my family or go to work or any of the other things that happen when you're in active addiction? These are serious feelings. And I think putting light to them on TikTok makes people look at addicts in a way of like, I don't know, like a, a joke. The stigma around addiction is already bad enough right? It's already bad enough. There are so many people who do not believe that addiction is a disease. They believe it is a choice. They believe that people who don't get clean are worthless and less than human. We see that so often, so often. And when you do these types of TikToks, you're not helping the stigma. You're making it worse. And maybe that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Look, if you disagree with me, if you think I'm totally off base here, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Um, you know, I, as I said, I decided that I'm not going to put the, I, I've, I downloaded them. I looked through a whole bunch and I, and I have a bunch that really irked me, but I'm not going to put it. And the reason I'm not is because I didn't go through these people's channels. I didn't go through these people's profiles. Uh, I did a few and some of them seem to be making a heck of a lot of money on their PayPal's by doing these fake addiction videos, which is a whole nother thing. Don't get me started on that. However, It is possible that that one video does not adequately describe their entire channel's content. And I would hate to make an assumption about, you know, putting up a video saying like, this is awful, and then have the rest of their content be really helpful recovery content. I don't want to do that. So, you know, but look through. They're not hard to find. Um, It took me a couple minutes to find a whole bunch of these. And they're a hot mess. Again, I think when you share the hope at the end, when you when you have a message that addiction's awful, but there's hope and recovery is possible, I think that's great. I think we can use a lot more of that. I think there's a lot of great addiction recovery TikToks on there. I think there's a lot of people who give helpful advice, who give a lot of support, who share the hope. I think that's wonderful. I really do. I, it's just these let's pretend to be high, let's pretend to be in withdrawal TikToks that have really gotten me irked. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Uh, If you want to see more videos, hit the like button, subscribe. Um, Yeah, I haven't been posting much, but people still seem to be watching my content, which has inspired me to kind of get back into it. So let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I pretty much respond to every comment. Uh, So yeah, I look forward to hearing your perspective because I want to know it. Am I the only one that thinks this?